Hello and welcome to Sweet Story of the Blues. And today I am looking back at our game with Woking. It will probably be one of my shortest videos this today because I didn't actually go to Woking. I did say in the Halifax vlog I was 50 50 whether I could make it. And although I could eventually do make it, I came down with something Friday night and Saturday morning. I was showing up and I spent all the virtually all weekend in bed ill. So, and as usual, when I'm not there, we go on and win. Another good one. I miss, I always seem to miss them. So, as a jinx curse, come back, who knows. But the main thing is, we won. And that's why there was no pre map swag. But, I've still seen enough people to be able to talk about the game and the highlights. I'm also wearing a rare goalkeeper's top. I think it's from the 80s or 70s which I recently got hold of so I thought today is a great day to it to make it stay but I won't be wearing it much because it is such a rare item but I always like to get a photo of me and see we won we finally did that run of draws and got ourselves a win it got us up to 7th place from what I've seen we played well People say walking up ball, but you can only play what's in front of you. But at the same time, it looked like we kept walking out. We stopped him from playing football. Good team performance. Seen everyone on the team put a shift in, put the effort in. Caprice and Kitchen both had decent games. The kitchen looking like the Kitchen when he first joined and last season. Good to see Fond up on the score sheet. And also Norwood, some say it was no goal, but it looks like it was Fond up's goal and Lunchton, to be fair. Their goal was a good goal, but it's encouraging, it's the sort of result we needed, especially with other teams around us losing games. And people said, like, there is hardly anyone you can fault for that performance. It's good to see Hammond back in the team, give a bit of energy. That's three starts and three wins for him. Moffy, once again, showing what he's brought, his experience from a high level, but another good performance. And I do really think we've got a quality player in him. Ragland's improving game by game. All good, you could see with his throw-ins, what they're offering to the team. Garner, by all accounts, played really well before he got injured. Conlin had an improved game. And good to see Garner get a few minutes out there. And now we have to build on this. The key to this now is consistency. So I've always said this league is a dog-eat-dog -dog league. On the day, anyone can be anyone. And the results of the weekend have shown that York and now the new league leaders, they beat filed 3-0, we've now sat the manager and have temporarily appointed Nelson DeFonso, if you remember that name. And that is because Gates said who led at the start of the day was 7-1 away to Dagenham. Another result that went in our favour was Eastley was 3-1 away at Halifax. Forest Green conceded the late equaliser, so they drew 2-2. Rochdale lost 2-1. Sully Moors. South End also lost 3-1 at home to Sutton. Other results, Barnet won 3-1 against Braintree. Boston won Albershot 1. Ebsleet picked up their first win of the season, beating Hartlepool 1-0. Samworth beat Maidenhead 3-1. The Oval drew 0-0 with Alchenham. So if we'll click the lead table now, I'm going to include it. Basically, we are now up to 7th. I always say judge the league table after 10 games. So after 9 games, York are the leaders. Forest Green the 2nd, Barnet 3rd, Rochdale 4th. Gates are down to 5th, but have a game in hand. Still don't know why their game with Samworth wasn't played last week. 6th is Eastley. 7th, obviously Zolden. 8th is Solio Moors. 9th is Dagenham. 10th, Halifax. 11th, Hartlepool. 12th, Yeovil. 13th, Woking. 14th, Aldershot. 15th Sutton, 16th Altrincham, 17th Southend, 18th Boston, 19th Tamworth, 20th Braintree, and the bottom four, 21st Worldstorm, 22nd Maidenhead, 23rd Fylde, 24th Edsleet. I do expect Fylde now to bounce back now to change the manager, but it just shows how tight it is already at the top. So, and I'm, I mean, looking forward to it, it's going to be entertaining, it keeps everyone on the toes and something for everyone to play for. And because of that win, we have now gone up to 7th, which has put us in a good position for this stage of the season.
lost 2-1. Our next away game is a week on Saturday away at Ebsleet. The lower house are running a coach to it, it's £45. I've done a screenshot of the tweet which has the details on. As usual, contact Bradley Knowles or Binman at can Nathan Price through the usual social media channels. To my knowledge, he's the only coach going to the game. So book on quickly, I'd suggest, especially if you win and it's two games. And there's quite a bit of demand for it. Now, I thought I'd mention this in the South End vlog. I did put a tweet out about it, but well done to Gunnar Haller. He's currently manager of Home Foss, who play in the Norwegian Division 3 Group 6. They're top of the league on 59 points, 21 games played, with literally four games to go. They scored 98 goals and only conceded 13. 10 points clear of second place at Elfram. The likelihood is they're going to be champions. And by saying that, I'm not calling for Millen's head, don't worry. But it's good to see an ex Oldham player doing really well. Gunnar Haller was one of my first heroes watching Latics. He was one of the first foreign players to play in the Premier League. And at the time, most of the foreign players in the Premier League when it first started were Scandinavian from Denmark, Norway, Sweden. He was part of the Norway team that got to the World Cup in 1994 which was also eliminated England doing the same group. And it's good to see him having a bit of success. And if he's still there next year, it's about an hour from Oslo. It's definitely a potential groundhog to go and do. And I'm sure when they do confirm in that league, they will party like that. It'd be nice if we could have a pre-season visit over there, although the ground holds just over 3,000. But well done, Gunnar. And when it is in black and white, I'll put it on air. But I know the OFC Latics phone in the Bunch Park alerts us and podcast have announced that Gunner is going to be on the call in this week, which would be good this week. Good to hear his stories, see what he's up to and what he talks about as a manager. Some people say I'm a football manager, he always gets the Oldham job. So let's see. Well, what a fantastic record that is. I'm going to put a copy of the table in after this. One more thing, um, the FA Cup third qualifying draw was going to say, now we don't come into this round, we come in the round after. And I'm not going to look at the draw yet because it's still replays to be played. I'll go more into that on the weekend of the final qualifying draw. But one side that did stand out is Radcliffe v Berry. I know a few people said it'd be good if we could get Berry and play Mickey Glenn if they get through, but we'll wait and see. We also have two home games now coming up. Yorva on Saturday and Forest Green on Tuesday night. And these are two games which I think we'll know after them just really how far we are, how far we've improved on last year and how serious we are about pushing for promotion. Yorva won't be walk over. They've started off all right in this league, but still got enough in us to beat them. Forest Green will be the interesting one because it started well since the relegation from League 2. I did forget to mention these last week, but, well, Oldham girls have now kicked off the fixtures. It's great to see the Oldham Athletic women win their opening game of the weekend on Sunday. So let's hope they have a good season and, and in the long run, they can climb the leagues. We've always had a history of the girls. So I always remember Oldham Athletic ladies in the 90s who then became Oldham girls. And like you said, we've got many lads who dream of pulling on the shirt playing for Oldham. We've also got a lot of young girls who like to have this, the dream, and this gives them the same opportunity. I might be rugby, let's hope they can have a bit more success than the men's teams had in recent years. And the Latics Development Squad got a late equaliser to draw at home with Boston last week. I 
well, I roll from town to town. I go from town to town. I'm going nowhere, well, I'm the type of guy that likes to roam around. I'm never in one place. I roam from town to town. And when I find... And that concludes this week's Story of the Blues. Look forward to seeing you at the weekends. Come on, Alden, see on the terraces.